from what I understand, you were raised by a two parent household. Not right. something that many people who come from our community can say. Uh, what was your growing up like? What were your parents like? Did they have major influence on you or were you rebellious from, from minute one? No, I wasn't rebellious from minute, minute one. Growing up as a kid, I desired to be like my parents. So therefore, I basically did the things that they wanted me to do. I did the things to please my parents. I became a straight A student because I wanted so bad for my parents to be proud of me. And my parents, they came from Kinston, North Carolina. That was like a small little town in um, North Carolina, right? Mm -hmm. And so they were poor and they came to New York City during the time of migration to seek better opportunities for their family. And they got that. Mm -hmm. So they just gave us, gave us, gave us. I really didn't know life of the struggle. So for me, where I went left is I was intrigued by the ghetto. You know, it was something about the projects and the pits and the elevators that <laughs> stimulated me. So, you know, me, it wasn't that I had bad parents. I had the greatest of parents. I grew up, you know, I was, I went to, uh, a school in a predominantly Jewish area because my mother felt it was important for us to have the best education. However, I went to dance school on Saturdays. Actually, uh, Prodigy, rest in peace, his grandmother, Bernice Johnson, had this studio and we would go there every Saturday and folks like Diana Ross's daughter and Ben Vereen was a teacher, taught oh, wow. classes to some of the alumni. It was crazy. So I had that experience and experience of the Black church but I, it was important that I was diversified and I did swimming and judo and karate and all kind of stuff. They, you know, um, introduced us to the arts. So I was well balanced. However, it was something about that life in the fast lane. It was something about seeing the prostitutes and the hookers and the, it was something about that thing that just lured me in. So my first boyfriend was a 16 year old drug dealer from the 40 house and projects in Jamaica, Queens. And it went from me idolizing my parents and trying to be like them to me trying to be like the hustlers in the hood. So this good girl kind of went bad, so to speak. Let, let me ask you something. And this is for anybody who's watching this, who has children. You just spoke so highly of your mom and dad and they're professionals in their own right. Mm -hmm. What could, you know, somebody like myself who's a parent or somebody out there who is raising young girls, young black men, what could your parents have done differently? Nothing. Or, the thing that they could have did was introduce me to me, meaning like, that's why I do the programs in the schools, right? Huh? I'm today what you call a credible messenger. When I speak to students, they have a different, I have a different effect on them than the principal or right. th than your parents because they feel like their parents just don't want them to have fun. When I'm able to talk from my wounds and show them my scar, like, look, I did this right here and here's the scar I got from it. I was away from my kids for a whole decade because I chose to live life in the fast lane. Now they want to talk to you. So what was it like in there? Mm -hmm. and I'm, nah, it wasn't good. Let me tell you about it. So it's like, Kids just kind of got to know from people who've been through it. And with kids, I feel like instead of telling them what to do, you got to give them options. You can say, hey, you do this, you get this result. You do that, you get that result. But kind of leave them feeling as though they have an option. But when you just tell them what you're going to do and tell them what it's going to because that's what my mother did. She told me that this was going to be it with this boy and I'm not to mess with kids over there. And this is the, 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 okay, lady, this is what I'm going to tell you now. I'm going to rebel against you and do what I want to do. And that's really the mindset of kids. Mm -hmm. Think about you as a kid. We wanted no more, but to be grown, right? Yep. And independent. So I feel like you do best with children when you give them options, right? And you let their options dictate their outcomes. So kind of govern them in a loving way. But when they do something that's wrong, not judging them and you're up throwing a book at them, you're just like, okay. So this is what you decided to do. Now look at the consequence. And then have them make the choice that, you know what? I don't want these consequences anymore. I want this reward. So kind of instructing them and showing them and not telling them what to do and allowing them to speak to credible messengers and really get to see the true cautionary tales, I think that's what has the greatest impact.
You said something that just stood out to me. You said they could have introduced me to me. Mm -hmm. But what is what does that mean exactly? I, I, I get all of 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 you know giving the options and showing mm -hmm. that this could happen if you take this road. This, there's a likelihood that that's going to happen. But introducing me to if me. I would have that? met me. If somebody would have come to me and say, Jamila, this is, you keep playing with this right here. This is what it's going to be. And I'm not telling you because I think I know the answer. I'm telling you because I know the answer because I did that. See, that's another thing we do as parents. We want to hide our bad stuff. So we don't want to tell the kids what we've been through because we don't want them to see us in that light. Sometimes it's good to expose your wounds. So you'd be like, hey, yo, you know what? I tried that too. Look what happened to me. It's like, oh, oh, my mother did that. So even with my kids, because I'm so open with them, they like, all right, now nah, we're not doing that. We're not going where mommy just went paying from. That, that's crazy. So it's just exposing them to the true realities and not trying to sugarcoat stuff and not trying to be so perfect. Right? Our parents always wanna, mm, nah, I messed up too. It's okay, we mess up sometimes. But here's how you could do it better. Kids, when you keep it real with them, I feel like that you have a better chance for them to keep it real with you. Great answer. You said you met this boy mm -hmm. selling drugs, he's 16 years old. Were you looking for some type of acceptance in the street Absolutely. or was it just pure? No. I was infatuated with this young man. No, I, it wasn't just him. So first of all, it took me a long time before I had a boyfriend, right? I didn't, I, I didn't feel pretty enough. In my era growing up, it was light-skinned girls with long hair. They, and those were my friends. So it was like the, my friends around me seemed to have all of the fly boys, and I didn't have a boyfriend. So um, then in that era, this is when the crack cocaine epidemic hit. And dude, like my 16 year old boyfriend was making tens of thousands of dollars at 16. It was a whole different type of money. Mm -hmm. Money like folks ain't never really seen before. It was crazy. The amount of money that they was making with the drug game. So a lot of my girlfriends had drug dealer boyfriends that had the BMWs, the Benzes, all of this stuff. And I saw them and I went in on that, right? So I chose to date these kind of guys. But after I got in and I saw that it was all like, more than what it was cracked up to be. Instead of me wanting to date them, I wanted to have the things that they had. Because I realized once I got next to them, they wasn't really smarter than me. Some I was smarter than them because I'm telling them how to go get their money and make it make more money. So then I was like, yo, forget trying to be the drug dealer's girlfriend. I'm going to be that chick that has all my own things and I'm going to get my own money and I'm going to make people want to be like me. And in essence, that's what I did. Okay, so now you're not just infatuated with the streets, hanging out with drug dealers, dating drug dealers. You find yourself getting into the drug game. Yes. This is a parent's nightmare. How old are you at this time? Uh, shoot, I mean, I, was, I did that by the time I turned 16. So I met him when I was 14. Two years in the game, I learned the game. So when he go on a cop, who he taking with him? I'm going to, I'm going to, mm -hmm. I see how they cutting up. I see what they doing. I'm seeing the, 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 the opportunity, right? So I'm like, all right, let me try that. But I really didn't like that whole crack cocaine thing. Cause it was like, for me, it was something about what I saw it do to folks that I really wasn't sold in on that. So mm -hmm. I got into the weed business and I have one of my um, boyfriend's helped me get a pound of weed. I took it to North Carolina and I blew up off of it. Like that, that, you know, the little, what we sell in New York for a nickel was like $20 there, like a $20 bag. It was crazy. So the flip was just dumb. So I learned at a young age how to flip money. And I never understood at the time that I was gifted to be an entrepreneur. I didn't know what that was. I didn't know what that looked like. Right. So I just had this thing in me and this knack for knowing how to make money and knowing how to make people want what I had. And I just went into it. Now, imagine me with a mentor. Imagine me with somebody that really got money and was like, nah, look, ma, you don't got see, because the thing about a true hustler, you don't got to sell crack. You can sell socks. There you go. It's, 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 it's not about your product. It's about the way you market your product and you brand your product. But I didn't know that at the time. Which brings me to my point. That's what I do now. 
for my life career. I am the founder of the VIP Online Academy. I'm also a part of a bunch of different community programs where we go in and we teach our young people how to make money now. And I tell them, baby, you don't have to scam. Here's what you do. This is how you make some real money. And this is the difference of the money you make this way. And this is the difference of the money you make that way. If you get this money this way, you can get it. And you can probably make a lot of it. But now you got to look over your head. You got to worry about the cops. You got to worry about being more successful than your friend that you think is your friend, but then is your friend of me and is going to turn you in at the end of the day. Then I get to talking to them about the folks that jumped on the stand on me. And they be like, okay, you know what? Miss Davis, we don't want that money. How? Tell us about how to get the other money. Then I bust right. that thing down. Okay, well, baby, this is what a corporation looks like. So we have young people um, who have not only incorporated but we help them get their logo. We help them in branding and marketing. They learn all of the basics of how to build your brand. So we have now um, dozens of entrepreneurs that we've made out of students, and I'm proud of that work. And that's what I mean by talking to Jamila. Had Jamila spoken to the Jamila of today, that Jamila certainly wouldn't have went down the route that she took. There was an easier route to go through. And I didn't know about it because there was no, my parents was teaching me about civil servant jobs and I ain't want that. So they telling me about take the tests and da -da 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 and sign your life away for 30 years to make, nah, I ain't want to do that. And I didn't want to sound cocky, but that wasn't what I was into. I wanted to make money a little bit more quicker because, you know, it's an instant fix generation. Now I don't promote instant fixes. However, I do tell people, if you're willing to work hard and here's another platform and another way to do it besides your traditional nine to five. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.